Commutify presents Between the Lines with Andy Keaton. Each week, we explore the challenging issues transportation demand management professionals face on their journey to transition commuters from driving alone to more sustainable, shared and active commuting habits. Be sure to subscribe to hear next week's episode and check out our exclusive commuter playlists on Spotify. This is Between the Lines with Andy Keaton. Hello, everyone, and welcome aboard to this week's episode of Between the Lines. I'm Andy Keaton, and you are listening to part two of our two-part series, Looking Back on 2021 and the best moments of each of our interviews um, with incredible guests that we've had over the last year and our first year recording Between the Lines. If you didn't watch the first one, feel free to go back and check it out. If you have, welcome back again. Uh, We're really excited to have you here and listening or watching to um, really just a summary of what we have been up to in 2021. Enjoy. Today, we are joined by Peter Deppi. Peter is the co-founder and CEO of Commute, a universal charging network for micro-mobility. From supporting rights for student athletes versus the NCAA, great story, you should ask him. Off the podcast, but a really good story. Um, To challenging the status quo within urban mobility in a land built for cars, Peter's goals are to change the world for the better in his own unique ways. He's a recent Kettering University graduate and founded Commute together with a fellow KU grad, Scott Spittler in 2018 during the rise, um, the early rise of micromobility. So we're excited to talk to you today. Peter, thanks for being on. Awesome, Andy, thanks for having me. Great to be here. From your own uh, perspective, why will universal micromobility charging help save the planet? So universal micromobility charging infrastructure will save the planet really because, again, of, of one main thing. It allows that community to choose the form factor that's right for them. And ultimately, that's how you get adoption as opposed to force feeding them one form factor that's not right for them. Uh, today, we're talking with Guru Medasani. Guru is the founder and CEO of Ridey, which is the first e micromobility company for private communities. We're going to get into that in a second, what that means. Um, This is for offices, campuses, and apartments in the United States. Prior to starting Ridey, uh, Guru spent a decade in technology working as a data science and big data architect for leading Silicon Valley technology companies like Domino Data Lab and Cloudera, and as a big data researcher at agricultural firm Monsanto, now Bayer. In a couple of sentences, you know, why will micromobility for private communities, as we've been talking about here, help save the planet? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Um, You know, I've always been passionate about climate change and, uh, you know, and I hear the word planet and I I really want to talk about how we can save the planet. So um, in in terms of, um, you know, a shared electric transportation like uh, electric bikes and electric scooters for private communities like um, offices and corporate campuses. You know, it can help save the planet uh, by providing an alternative uh, transportation option uh, for employees uh, anytime that they want, right? Um, and shifting them away from car trips, essentially, and reducing, uh, you know, the amount of CO2 emissions and, you know, you know and also Traffic congestion, parking congestion uh, will help, uh, will help uh, make the communities uh, happier and healthier and more importantly, uh, help uh, you know, address the global uh, rising temperatures and uh, climate change. And this is how uh, we believe uh, it's going to help address and save the planet. Today, we're speaking with Michelle Sidio. Michelle is the head of partnerships at Lyft Tango, which is a shared mobility platform um, and uh, a great Commutify platform, a uh, great Commutify partner. Uh, we're really happy to have um, Michelle on today. Michelle has 15 plus years of experience uh, in various organizations across the retail, technology, and IT software spaces, um, where she has successfully implemented st- strategy and process refinement and maximization to transform the end user experience, both internally and externally. I think we're going to talk a little bit about some of her past. Um, uh, positions as well and things that she's done before joining with Tango. But 
Um, before we start, thanks for being on today. Thanks for having me, Andy. It's good to see you. <laughs> yeah, it, it's great to have you on. And I'm excited about this uh, particular episode because we're talking about something that is pretty broad, but also pretty specific. So in a, in a couple of sentences, why will demand responsive transit help save the planet? Okay. Big question. <laughs> it is a big question. <laughs> um, so just under one third of all carbon emissions come from vehicles, right? We have to reduce this number. Um, it's not a nice to have, it's a must to have. Uh, DRT is a way to show people that there is a more convenient and efficient alternative than driving alone. Um, more shared trips means less CO2 in the atmosphere. And I think that's how DRT will help save the planet. We are talking with Marissa Carlisle, who is an account manager at WeWork. This is very exciting. Um, so Marissa originally worked in the wine industry, but after a change of heart, she decided to move to San Francisco, where she fell in love with WeWork's mission um, as a community-based company. And there she started at WeWork on the community team. So we'll get into that a little bit, helping to manage one of their many buildings in the Bay Area, um, in San Francisco specifically. And a year and a half um, years ago, uh, one and a half years ago, excuse me, uh, just two weeks after the lockdown started, she started in a new position, was promoted to account manager, um, and that's where we started working together. So we're going to get into a little bit about her journey um, with WeWork, as well as kind of our, our uh, relationship together um, between Cutify and WeWork. But the reason that you're all here today is to learn about what we're talking about today, and that is why co-working is going to help save the planet. Marissa, thanks for being on. Thanks for having me, Andy. So can you just summarize for us kind of the key points, maybe in a couple of sentences, um, why will co-working help save the planet? Why is this such an important solution? Yeah, definitely. Co-working is such an important solution because with our distributed location, we can cut, cut down on... Um, commuting. We can cut down on the cost of setting up an office. We can cut down on the waste of setting up an office. You know, there's, there's a lot that goes into making an office what it is. And if we can utilize a WeWork and have, you know, your, your company and your employees come there and multiple companies doing that, it's just a great way to help, you know, cut down on all of the things I mentioned and help just work towards a more sustainable workplace. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that's why co-working is so great. And I think if you haven't tried it out already, you should, you definitely should. It's um, just for like the cultural impacts and, you know, just meeting, meeting others. It's, it's awesome. I agree. Couldn't have said it better myself, I think. Today we are joined by uh, a coworker of mine, actually, Esteban Sanchez. Esteban is the co-founder and CTO of Commutify. Uh, he's an entrepreneur coming from a software engineering background, and he's passionate about the combination of data, which we'll be talking about quite a bit today, product innovation and creativity to solve real world problems in technology. Um, at Commutify, he's been applying a data-driven approach to the transportation ecosystem to help organizations gain a deeper understanding of their commuters and drive sustainable change through TDM or transportation demand management programs. And Commutify's technology is currently uh, used by various cities, governments, Fortune 500 companies, consultants, and TMAs across North America. Uh, so I think you know if you've been listening to a lot of our episodes, uh, you may have heard me mention Commutify uh, here and there, but today we're going to dive a little bit more deeply into it. Um, but Esteban, thanks for being on. Yeah, thanks for having me. I mean, I've been watching the episodes for a while and now I can participate. I, and I'm excited to have you on because I think this is an interesting conversation. We talk a lot about uh, kind of in every episode, the idea of data and, you know, thinking about kind of the system from a, you know, a quantifiable way. In a few sentences, uh, just kind of tell us that high level, what's the most important thing about commuter data? Why will it help save the planet? Yeah, if I was to summarize that in 20 seconds, I would say we have so many solutions out there, so many people working towards solution. 
but we can't start changing what we can't measure. So it's why commuter data will save the planet. It won't in its own, but it will enable every single other solution to save the planet. And it will mm. empower them to do so much more efficiently. And I think that's really where commuter data needs to be. I like it. Form that, that ground level to get everything else going. I'm joined today by a special guest. I think we're going to have a pretty fun, interesting conversation today. We're joined by Mark Cleveland, who's the co-founder and CEO of Hitch Rewards, which is a mobility incentive platform that's helping communities and the planet motivate and measure a safer, greener, and smarter commute. So the Hitch Rewards program was launched in early 2018, and it captured over 13 million miles of shared ride data over just two years. Um, and we're going to be talking a little bit about what that means and some of the insights that have been formed from that, including uh, that it was featured in a USDOT report, um, which is really, really interesting. Uh, besides all this great hitch stuff that, that Mark does, he's also a, he's a serial entrepreneur with a track record um, of success over 19 years uh, in the commercial transportation information system space. And uh, he brings this unique insight to the interconnected value and impacts of driver incentives, data, and multimodal movements. Mark, uh, we're really excited to have you on. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Andy. It's great. In a few sentences, can you just tell us a little bit more about why these direct mobility incentives are important while the, why, and why they will help save the planet? Well, paying people to do what you want them to do is the most effective decision you can make, period. Um, if you have an unlimited budget, we're going to build unlimited roads. But we have uh, we have limited space, limited budgets, and uh, and we, we we're not solving this problem with more infrastructure in most cases. So we have to change the way we use our infrastructure, and we have to do a better job of rewarding people for doing things that we've invested so heavily in, um, and which includes paying them to stay at home. Our 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 application, you know tracks and rewards you if you stay at home and you're a part of a telecommute program. Um, I, I would say that pricing the passenger is critical. Uh, flexibility in that pricing is important. You don't pay the same on weekends unless you're a, a manufacturer that has a weekend shift and you need your people to show up before 8 a.m. on the weekend. You know, you use all those use cases and you run through it and, it, and it's pretty, pretty powerful. Um, you're planting a tree every 50 miles you hitch. You're possibly getting rewards in, in the form of cash, depending on the market you're in. Here in Nashville, we're launching our program with a half a million dollars in cash um, paid to uh, the general public when they do the things that the Greater Nashville Regional Council and our, our regional leaders have determined they want to do. Hmm. So we're, we're injecting technology and transit. That's the program. A half a million dollars a year for the next two years is the funding uh, corporation funding on top of that because we do all the reward stacking and sharing so we can spread the burden out. We can change, we can change pricing, uh, on demand or based on dynamic, uh, rule sets. And, and if you have that flexible of, of, of an, of a tool set in front of you, then you have to ask yourself, okay, I've got a great fork and I've got a great knife. Um, which meal am I eating? You know, yep. what, what, what am I what am I actually trying to accomplish? And so where, where I find people have the greatest challenge is, well, how do you pay for those rewards? Well, we got it paid for by a federal highway funded surface transportation block grant. It's uh, part of a $10 million set aside. Um, and if we're successful with this, we expect that to continue into the future. This is a two year project. And um, we're seeing other regions and other cities and other employers get behind it and jump in. So we're going to create a marketplace solution, not put all the burden on major employers. And we're going to make it with open APIs and uh, open uh, approach to data. And we're going to pay people for participating and pay people for their data. That's the summary. I mean, uh, I suppose if you, if I would say our, our strength is that we have a very, we've spent a lot of time um, with a direct consumer support. Just imagine yeah. all the people who commute from all the different walks of life, from all the different employers and, and circumstances. We, we've gotten real good at direct consumer support and we got an app that's so simple and we don't bombard you and crush you with email marketing 
and all the other stuff that's out there. So you gotta res- you gotta you gotta respect that we're not tracking people all the time. We're tracking you when you want to be tracked, and we're rewarding you when you do things that people think have value. And in that environment, we've set the table, we put the plate in front of you, we've given you the tools, and now you can choose between steak or a salad or both. But you can do anything you want with a rule set and an environment that's that flexible. That's awesome. And today we're joined by Gene Sanson. Uh, Gene is the Senior Transportation Planner at the City of Boulder in Colorado and an instructor with the Masters of the Environment program at the University of Colorado Boulder. She has dedicated her 20 plus year career to the field of transportation planning and her work includes planning major transit infrastructure investments such as the Tex Rail project connecting Dallas and Fort Worth, a commuter rail network for the Phoenix region and an innovative multimodal transportation system for Bryce Canyon National Park. And in her current position at the city of Boulder, she's leading efforts to transform Boulder's regional commuter corridors from car-oriented highways to corridors that offer convenient travel options. But today we're talking not about that day job, but about her second job as the instructor um, within the Masters of the Environment program, which fun fact is uh, the program where I got my master's degree uh, a few years ago. So Jean, thanks for being on. Thanks, Andy. Good to be here. So in, you know, in a few sentences, why do you think educating future transportation leaders will help save the planet? Right. So we know that, you know, transportation is a leading contributor to greenhouse gas emissions. I'm not telling you or your audience anything they don't know. And that's all good and fine. And we know the science behind it. But, you know, the challenge is thinking about how people move from a personal standpoint and a community standpoint. So like you mentioned earlier in the podcast, you can put all the bus service out there that you want, but if there isn't an incentive for folks to ride it, they're not going to. So understanding those relationships and providing the sustainable transportation options that are realistic for people is so important to this equation and doing so in a way that is well integrated with smart growth land use policies is really the key to creating creating these sustainable communities moving forward. So, um, you know, that's super inspiring. You can understand the science and the policy of it. Um, But as important, and this is what I tell my students, the hard skills, but it's also the soft skills, being able to communicate information, um, you know, between yourself and your colleagues and between yourself and your community members to understand what their needs are is so important. And if we can't educate our, our, our future leaders to be those skilled communicators, then we're missing the boat on anything we're trying to do to save the planet. And so that's what I spent a lot of time talking through with our with my students, encouraging them to to continue to pursue that skill set to be able to negotiate solutions moving forward, particularly related to transportation, but it could be any discipline. Yeah, I mean that was one of the things I liked the most about the Master of the Environment program myself was like Hard skills are great, but learning those soft skills and being able to apply it to the real world was was really exciting. Today, I am joined by Johnny Simkin. Johnny is the co-founder and CEO of Swiftly, a mobility operating system that empowers mass transit agencies to provide more efficient, reliable, and seamless transportation. Today, over 100 cities and 7,000 transit professionals use Swiftly to improve transportation for nearly 2 billion passenger trips per year, which is great. We're really excited to be talking, obviously, about transportation. Um, and prior to uh, founding Swiftly, Johnny's also been uh, around the block a bit in the tech world, is the director of product at Rafter Inc. and the co-founder and CEO of Hub EDU Inc. Um, and in his spare time, he enjoys hockey, ping pong, tennis, and coffee. Uh, all great things, I would say. Thanks for being on today, Johnny. Thanks for having me, Andy. Why will public transit data help save the planet? Well, I think it, it, it's a great question. I think it goes very much to what I just talked about. Um, transportation is almost a third of greenhouse gas emissions in the country. Public transit is one of the most efficient and uh, reliable ways to reduce that impact because we're getting people out of their single occupancy vehicles, shifting them actually to more electric modes as, as transit fleets are electrified as well. And um, if you were to, to look at the largest contributors, getting people out of their passenger cars into shared mobility that with electric fleets, that's where you're going to have a huge environmental impact. One other thing I'm going to add too is 
the the environment is is obviously essential. So is the economy. Every every yep. dollar invested in public transit it has about three dollars of local economic returns. So wow. if we're thinking about recovering from the pandemic. Um, the environment is a huge aspect of that, and so is rebuilding our local economies. And so I think public transit is just essential to uh, thinking about the future. This is another thing I like about this podcast is almost every time we're talking about the environmental benefits, there's always like the caveat. Well, it also helps with uh, something you know economic. And today we're joined by Andrew Salzberg, who's the head of policy at Transit, the largest public transportation app in North America. Uh, from 2019 to 2020, Andrew was a Loeb Fellow at Harvard, where he created the Decarbonizing Transportation Newsletter. And before that, he created and held a unique executive role at Uber, where he created the first teams focused on partnerships with public transportation agencies and environmental sustainability. And prior to all of that, he worked at the World Bank on Urban, uh, Urban and Transport Development in China. He teaches at MIT in Columbia, holds a Bachelor of Civil Engineering from McGill University here in Montreal, um, and a Master's in Urban Planning from Harvard. So I think it's safe to say we're pretty excited to have you on today, Andrew. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Let us know in a few sentences, why will transit data accessibility help save the planet? Got it. Well, if you look in the United States, car and light truck emissions uh, one third of the global total for those emissions are in the United States, and it's the single largest source of emissions. So if we can get people to change behavior onto anything but the car, you get huge benefits. And if we're going to do that, we need all those modes to be accessible, easily available, and data standards are what makes that competition possible. I love it. Succinct. Perfect. <laughs> uh, couldn't have said it better myself. Well, everyone, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, this has been an incredibly fun uh, two episodes that we've put together. Um, a huge shout out, special thanks to our producer, uh, the person behind the scenes, really making this happen throughout the entire year, Shahed Abotouk. She's been incredible. She spends hours each episode putting this stuff together for the video on YouTube and for the uh, audio that goes up on the podcasts, uh, the podcast streaming services that you all listen to. So huge shout out to her. Thank you so much for an incredible year. And thanks again to everyone who was on uh, one of our episodes this year. Uh, it's been a really interesting ride and really been great to talk to you and get to know what you're doing in TDM. Uh, the industry is bright and we're excited to see how it keeps growing. Um, next year, we have even more exciting guests, so make sure you tune in. Uh, if you haven't yet, subscribe to our email list at betweenthelines.io. Uh, there you get just updated each week when there's a new episode with a little bit more info that you can dive into from our conversation as well. Definitely want to get that done and do that. Uh, make it a New Year's resolution uh, to subscribe to the Between the Lines uh, newsletter. Uh, what, what, better could, what better thing could you do? And if you haven't yet, definitely give us a like, a follow, a listen, wherever you do listen to podcasts. Um, and if you haven't yet done this either, make sure you check out the video on YouTube that we post up each week. Uh, once again, you can find all of that at betweenthelines.io. Thanks again for listening. Thanks for coming in for this year. Um, we're really excited to see what is on store for 2022 and let's keep it going. Keep this TDM train going. No pun intended. Bye. Thanks for joining us on this week's episode of Between the Lines with Andy Keaton. Be sure to subscribe to hear next week's episode and check out our exclusive commuter playlists on Spotify.